Hello, this tutorial is about the electric instrument within Ableton. This is basically another form of synthesis. It works on physical modeling synthesis to, to basically generate the sound. Um, a quick overview of the um, instrument itself. It's based on um, an electric piano. So this is like a software emulation of how um, an electric piano works. So it's modeled on how a real one one works. So if you kind of imagine how the, the physics um, of a real life um, electric piano works, this works the same way, only it's, it's physically modeled. So it's synthesized based on uh, physical modeling. So it's it looks at how this thing works in the real world and it tries to physically recreate uh, those aspects of the instrument uh, to create it within software. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the mechanics of how your piano works. First of all, this will really help you understand exactly um, how this works under the hood. So when you press a key on a piano, it activates a mallet that mallet hits a fork and then the fork is amplified. Now, basically that fork has two different elements to it. You have your tine bar and your tone bar. Your tine bar is where the mallet hits the fork and then it vibrates. The tone bar is the tuned section of the fork and that'll be tuned to a particular pitch. So each and every key on a, on, a, on, a, on a piano will have a particular length of bar and depending on the length will determine the pitch. So if you imagine looking at a keyboard, um, if you hit a particular key, that key is then activating the mallet which then hits the uh, fork and the fork has two prongs. One of the prongs are, as I said before, is, is basically where the mallet hits and then there's a second uh, fork within that uh, that is for pitch. So um, we'll go through that in more detail as we go along. But when the fork resonates for a long time um, after it's played, that is usually known as a decay. But basically what happens is when you press a key, um, it lifts what's known as a dampener. Now, this is just basically like a felt pad that goes on to the fork. So when you press a key and the key hits the mallet, the mallet then hits the tuning fork. This felt, or this felt uh, pad lifts up before that happens. So then when you hit the, the, the tuning fork or the fork, um, it basically resonates, it moves, it vibrates, and that's what generates sound. Well, as soon as you let go with the key, that pad falls down again onto the fork and that stops uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the resonance, the, the actual fork resonating and generating sound. So that dampens the sound. So that's where it gets its name from. So again, just to uh, briefly talk about that again, you have the key um, that activates the mallet. The mallet then hits the fork. The fork is actually amplified and that's how we hear it. Um, but again, the fork has two elements. It has uh, the tine bar, and that's where the mallet hits the fork. And then you have the tone bar, and this is the section of the fork that's responsible for pitch, as in the key or frequency. Um, so the fork resonates for a long time unless uh, you let go of the key, and then the uh, dampener is applied. So there's loads of other aspects uh, that make up this sound, and we're going to go through that in more detail as we go along. There's basically five section, uh, sections within elect electric. You have the mallet, fork, dampener, pickup, and then global settings. So uh, we have an idea what some of these things are already. Um, a mallet is the thing that you're going to use to strike your fork. The fork is where the sound is generated. The dampener um, basically controls um, the sound of the dampener. You can get different types. You can get soft dampeners, uh, more hard damp dampeners. So they're going to have different effects uh, when they're being applied and lifted from the fork. We'll go through that in more detail as we go along. The pickup is basically where the vibration um, that the uh, mallet hit, hitting the fork and and uh, you know basically those vibrations that that, that creates. The pickup is where those vibrations are amplified so we can actually hear and perceive them. So you can move around where this pickup actually 
picks up the vibrations and that will uh, change the sound quite a bit as well. So we'll have a mess around with it around with that as we go along. Now next up we have our global settings and that's the overall um, settings for everything that we see here. And you can see that it's, uh, it's nicely broken up as well. And uh, once you understand the mechanics of how a piano works, I think it becomes much easier to understand what's going on here. If you don't under understand the mechanics of things, sometimes it's really difficult. So that's why I'm putting that out there now. So uh, we can basically build upon that and hopefully it helps you understand the rest of what I'm going to say. Okay, so let's look at the mallet section. I'm just going to play this. This is literally um, the uh, instrument from uh, when you click on it. So if you go to instruments and if you click on electric, this is what you get. I haven't changed anything at all. So that's what it sounds like there. Now if I add a bit of reverb. Very, very nice. Okay, so if you have Ableton 10, you'll um, hopefully have the probability pack. And I'm going to turn that on there a wee second. And if you want to find that and follow along, you go to packs and then probability pack by Sonic Faction and you go to probability arp so that's what i have the only thing that i've changed here is changed the shape to a minor 11th chord so, so that's basically what i've done there i've i've moved from this side to this side and just take off hole there as well and also um i have changed the strum so this drum is usually at zero, and I've taken that up to around about 21. So now when I play a key, I'm just pressing C, A sharp, B. So you get some really nice strumming effects. I've done a separate tutorial on that, so I'm not going to um, I'm not going to actually uh, spend much time on that at all but I'm going to just knock it off for now and I might knock it on again in a wee while this is just to give you an idea as to what you can do with some of these sounds okay so let's look at section one the mallet so the stiffness um, this is basically the stiffness of the striking area uh, so higher values will give you a brighter sound and lower values will give you a softer sound so let's try this So that's softer, and it's going to get brighter. Okay, so that's the stiffness of the striking area. So obviously, if it's really stiff, it's going to be harder to get any any vibrations from it because um, it's it's a it's a more solid surface. Um, so yeah, let's move on to force. Force. This is uh, the force of the mallet strike so if you're striking um if you're striking an area with a, a mallet and that force is really high uh, you'll get a hard strike and if you hit it softly or lower you get a soft strike so that's going to have an impact on the sound or the vibration so these are ways you can just change change the tonal characteristics of your sound. Um, next up we have velocity and key and basically what this does is it allows you to add modulation based on velocity and the key that you're pressing on your keyboard so it'll create varia variation basically so if I'm going to add a wee bit in here like so so the higher keys will open up uh, the stiffness 12% and the key as well will take it up 16% so it depends on how hard you, you press your keys will determine exactly 
how much stiffness that there is. And then based on the key that you press as well, that will determine the stiffness and also the force. So that's something to be aware of. You can just add loads of variation. So when you're playing uh, based on how hard or soft you hit a key will dictate how your sound actually is. Okay, so let's move on to the noise section. Now this is part of the model section as well. So what is the noise? What does that represent? It basically simulates the impa in impact of the noise mallet. So basically, if your mallet uh, hits the uh, you know the the area where you hit, and it can be noisy, you can generate a noise as well as a tone. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to basically shape the noise. So how long the noise takes to decay is here. Uh, the pitch sets the center frequency of the noise. And then the volume is like a, it's just, you know, how much of this noise do you want to apply to your sound? So let's have a mess around with it and see. You can hear it there. So I would say there's a wee bit too much there. So let's take that down. And let's see. Again, that depends on what you want. Okay, I'm happy with that. So hopefully now you understand section one, which is the mallet section. Okay. So let's move on to our next section, which is the fork section. So this is the heart of sound generation within uh, you know, the electric instrument itself. So again, the fork has two sections, uh, time, which controls uh, the section that is struck by the mallet. Uh, color allows you to blend between high and low partial frequencies, so you can add higher uh, frequencies or lower frequencies based on the color of your sound. So, what do you want this instrument to generate? Do you want it to do you want it to generate more higher sounds or lower sounds? So, let's have a look at that. Okay. Next up, then we have decay, and this is the uh, decay of the time section. Um, so when the note's held, how long does it take for uh, this to decay? Let me just take off the reverb. there now. So you need to hold down the, the note there. So you can get a nice ringing sound there as well. If I take down the colour it should be lower. It sounds higher if I go to the left and duller when I go to the right. So there you go. This depends on the sound that you're after again, of course. Okay, so we've looked at the uh, time controls, color, decay, and level. And of course, level is how much of a mixture of this you want in. So the levels of all of these are really important because you're trying to find a blend between all of these different settings. If you're not too sure what you're at and you don't fully understand everything that I'm saying, it's fine. Experiment and you will get there. Okay, so let's look at the tone section here now. So this is time here and you can see there's divisions here and we can go on to tone. So tone controls the secondary res response of the fork, which is for pitch. And basically the delay and level works the exact same way as well. Um, so the decay is 
how long this is going to last for when I hold on a key. That's really nice. It's quite harsh, um, but we can EQ some of that out. I'm going to pop a, um, a limiter on here as well because I know this is getting quite loud. So let's do that for now and just take it back. Okay, reverb. Very nice. Okay, so you can hear the difference with a wee bit of reverb on there already. So it's good to kind of jump forward a few steps, test a few things out, and then look back again to see where you are. Okay, so we've done the uh, fork section, and again, that's for basically shaping and generating your sound. Let's move on now to the dampener section. So basically, uh, the... Oh, sorry, I forgot something here. The release is the decay time of both the time and tone. Uh, when the key is released. So if you want to be released there on well, your sound as well, you can pop that in. It's quite nice. Ooh, very nice. Beautiful. Okay, so there you go. I forgot that. It's a very important um, control as well. So let's move on now to the dampener. So this is used to help generate or stop uh, the vibrations of your fork, which is basically what your sound is. That's how your, your sound is generated. So the dampener basically uh, allows the vibrations to happen once you press a key because the dampener is lifted um, from the fork. But when you let go of a key, uh, the dampener drops back on to the uh, fork and then uh, the sound is dampened or stopped. Now, once that happens, uh, if you can imagine lifting something from a surface and dropping it. So if I lift a pen, it makes a sound. And when I drop it, it also makes a sound as well. So you imagine uh, if you're lifting, you know, quite a heavy felt uh, piece of material and you're lifting it from a, a fork and pinning it down again, it's going to make sound. There's going to be, you know, going to be friction there. This is me rubbing my hands. You know, you get... You could get sounds like that basically. So what the uh, dampener section allows you to do is generate these sounds and control them. So um, if we look first of all um, at the dampener section, so you have tone. Um, there's quite a few things that this can do. This is basically the stiffness of the damper. So a low amount will give you a soft dampener and a high amount will give you a hard one. So let's look at that. Let's bounce up the level a bit. So yeah, basically the higher amounts gives you a richer sound and the lower amounts gives you a more dampened sound. Okay, now let's look on at ATT and REL, so that's attack release. This is a mixture between the dampener being lifted and then reapplied again. So you might want um, a mixture between those two values. So if you do, you, you can you can use that basically to find a blend um, between those things. So that's, that's very, very important as well. Um, it's something that you should be aware of. And um, there's loads more here as well. You have level, which is the exact same. It's like a, it's like a dry wet for each section. Basically, it's the same uh, as the others. Now, there's a few um, there's a few sections within the dampener that I want to discuss as well. Um, so, um, if we look at well, even we'll leave it there. We'll move on to the pickup. So the pickup section is where um, the fork. Uh, it's basically amplified. So a pickup is another name for a coil pickup. Think of a guitar when you when you uh, when you play the uh, the strings or the or, or chord on a guitar. It vibrates. Those vibrations are are actually picked up by a thing called a pickup. What it does is it it, it it's got like a copper coil and magnets, and it can pick up uh, vibrations of metal strings. And when those strings vibrate. The pickup uh, picks those up and then amplifies them 
and sends them out to your speakers and then your speakers vibrate the exact same way as your strings vibrate and that's how you hear sound that then vibrates your eardrum um, now that's a very <laughs> um, that's a very basic explanation but the this is not the tutorial that explain all of that in any great detail so basically there's two different types of pickups um, if you look here where it says uh, R R is actually for a Rhodes pickup and it's an and an electro electro dynamic pickup. Then you have uh, the Waltz, which is an electrostatic pickup. So let's try the, these two different types of pickups. So one's slightly brighter than the other. Um, so the Rhodes is slightly softer. And there's a change in color, there's a change in dynamic there as well. Um, but yeah, so that's something for you to experiment with. So there's two different types of pickups that you can choose from. Um, now you have input and output. The input is from uh, is the input from the fork to your pickup. So you might want to add a wee bit of distortion to your sound so you can drive the signal here a little. And then you can take it out here if it's too loud. Very nice. Now, obviously that's a little too much. We'll just take it back a bit, but uh, let's pop on the probability or see how we get on. That's all sorts of beautiful. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, that is the input and output section, but there's some other things here as well that we haven't discussed. So, first of all, we have, uh, I'll just spell it out, S-Y-M-M, -M. so SIM, it's short for symmetry. So, what is a symmetry? Um, well, basically, this adjusts the vertical distance between the pickup and the sound. So, I'm gonna uh, give you a wee demonstration of that with two pens. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, so here I am. I might even do this. There we go, right. So, uh, this is the sound source. And basically, yeah, so let's go for uh, symmetry first of all. So this is the vertical distance between the pickup and the sound. So say this is, say this, this is the sound, and you can adjust your pickup to be further away vertically than the sound source. This is your sound source, and this is your pickup, which is gonna pick up the sound. So what you can do is you can have a closer um, above or below. I'm just trying to get the, <laughs> I'm trying to get this on screen. So it can be above the sound source or below the sound source or anywhere beside it as well. So that's what that is. Um, if you then look at distance, so say this is your sound source and I'm the, I'm the pickup, I can get closer closer to that sound source. So I'm going to pick up um, a lot more of the sound and maybe a lot more of the surface noise as well. So that's basically what it's doing. You can be above, below and further back or closer to the sound source. So that's going to, it's like um, if you have your phone and you're trying to record something and you're further away from it or you're a wee bit to the left or a wee bit to the right, you're going to get different sound. Um, and that's basically what it's trying to replicate because um, it's the exact same on a piano. Again, this is trying to physically remodel the way that these pianos work in the real world. So that's what that's for. So let me get rid of my head <laughs> and let's get back to it. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's basically everything that I wanted to touch on there. The other thing then we have is our global settings. So they basically are the parameters for the overall performance of electric. So volume is your main output for your volume. Voices is the amount of uh, notes or voices that can be heard at once. So if you're playing lots of keys, you want to have your voices quite high. If you're not, you might want that lower. You know, if I, if I change that to two, and just take this down. And 
I'm pressing three keys and getting two. So again, just be careful with which one of these you're using. The more you use, the more CPU or processing power that you need with your computer. So use that wisely. Um, to be honest, I usually have it set to 32 though. It just depends on the computer that you're using. Um, now let's look at semi. This transposes up or down in semitones. So if you want to pitch up a semitone, if I hold down C and go up one, two, one. So that's now C sharp and so on and so forth. Um, detune will allow you to detune in sense, so transposes in sense. You can add a wee LFO to this as well to create some movement um, within your sounds, which is quite nice. Um, again, I'll let you experiment with that. Stretch is a hard one to get your head around, and this is all to do with how um, a real life piano works. Um, at zero percent, it's at equal temperament. Negative values, which you can go in, and positive values, of course. Um, so negative values uh, gives you negative tuning and uh, it makes your upper notes flatter and it also makes your lower notes sharper. So they become more brilliant, I think is the term um, that you would use for that. So you can experiment with that. Um, I really don't change it too much, but it really depends on the job that you're using. So then uh, you've got P bend, that stands for pitch bend. So this sets the pitch bend of the modulation and semitones. Um, so if you have a MIDI keyboard and you hold down a key and change it and move your pitch wheel, you get that sound. So that's taking me up an octave. If I change this to six, or whatever I want. It'll be half the distance now. So yeah, you can adjust that as well, whichever way you like. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, it's an amazing uh, electric piano sound. It is absolutely gorgeous. And um, if anybody's making any kind of lo-fi or house or disco or classical or, or pop or pretty much anything, this is a really good go-to instrument. So enjoy, experiment. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you make.